Hello fellow aquascapers. So uh, today I thought we could take a look at another regulator. Um, this one <laughs> a lot cheaper than the last one we looked at, uh, the CO2 out one. This one is a budget option. This is a single stage regulator which means you can't adjust the working pressure. So uh, that's just calibrated from the factory and there's not much you can do about that. About that. Now this one um, is branded DEM machinery. But um, I've also seen this exact one sold under the brand CRDR and uh, in fact there are a few other uh, similar cheap regulators that seems to have a similar design. One that comes to mind is uh, one from a brand called MUFAN which uh, uses the same housing it seems but has another solenoid and uh, another set of gauges. And there's also one from a brand called Ista, which uh, seems to be pretty similar as well. Not exactly the same, but pretty similar. It uses the same concepts. So, uh, unfortunately, there seems to be a pretty common issue with these regulators, uh, which is that the solenoid stops working and uh, the CO2 is uh, let into the, into the tank even when the solenoid is off. And that, that is exactly what happened with this one. This one was only five days old when it fails, so that's that's pretty bad. But I will say, uh, when it's working, it's working pretty good. It's actually been pretty reliable since I fixed it. Uh, not much to complain about there. I, I actually think it's a pretty good regulator when it works. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you have this issue, I thought I would show you how to fix it. Because, like I said, it seems to be pretty common. And uh, it's a pretty easy fix compared to that uh, issue we had with the CO2 R regulator. So, yeah. Uh, how about we take a look? Okay guys, so uh, before I take this apart, I just want to talk a little bit about that, uh, about the issue here. Now, uh, what happened was uh, I woke up and I uh, discovered that the CO2 had been uh, running all night. Uh, now normally I run my CO2 on an automatic uh, timer, which means that it uh, shuts off, I think, an hour before the light shuts off and uh, turns out on again a couple of hours before the light turns on. And in this case, uh, even though the solenoid was off, the CO2 was still uh, being let into the tank. And uh, that can actually be harmful to the fish. Uh, it can even kill them uh, in excessive amounts. Now, uh, I was lucky my tank is uh, pretty stable. It's uh, been running good and there's uh, plenty of uh, oxygenation in the tank. So uh, no fish were harmed in my case, but just be aware that it can actually kill your fish. And uh, you don't really want that. So yeah, now again I'm not saying that these are inherently bad regulators, but if you have one I would suggest you just keep an eye out. Uh, this, uh, this could happen. So uh, yeah. Now, in order to fix this, we we'll want to get into that uh, solenoid valve here and clean it. Now, uh, all you need for this is a screwdriver. And a wrench. This is uh, pretty simple, like I said, there's not much to this one. Now there can be variations in uh, what solenoid it is used and how it's attached. This one is just attached by a nut here, you can see, but sometimes it's even just a finger nut you can turn to get uh, off. But uh, we do need to get it off in order to be able to clean it properly. So uh, I'm just loosening it here. And then we can pull off the actual solenoid itself. Now uh, this part usually don't go bad, so uh, this is just uh, a magnetic field that turns on or off. So this is not the issue, uh, at least if you can hear it click, it's not the issue. But in here we have a brass tube and uh, you know I expect that Possibly, uh, what happened with mine was there's a lot of there was a lot of oxidation inside these parts, and uh, maybe it could be galvanic corrosion, or maybe uh, you know using different metals can sometimes lead to corrosion, uh, or maybe it's just that some moisture got in here, or yeah, I don't know what uh, why it would happen, but it did happen. So uh, we need to disassemble it a little further. Now these uh, are really fine threaders, so you want to be careful when uh, 
screwing this back on. Again, take note of all parts. You don't want to lose anything. So then we can remove this plate here and uh, under that the brass tube sits. Now this is just held in place by friction. You can see there's a little o-ring on it and that's enough to keep it in place. Now uh, inside this uh, brass tube we have the plunger which is attached to a spring. Now I'm just going to show you a picture here. Uh, what happened with mine was that on these parts there were a lot of corrosion. And uh, that just uh, was enough so that the solenoid didn't seal properly on the tiny holes inside the, the cavity here. So yeah, just uh, the only thing you re really need to do is uh, clean off that corrosion and then reassemble. That's, uh, it's that simple. So what I did was, uh, here we have some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, that's excellent for removing corrosion. And then I just used this soft nylon brush on uh, my Dremel tool here. Now if you don't have one of these you can also just use uh, a toothbrush. I prefer one with uh, slightly stiffer bristles here because that's easier for removing corrosion. But yeah, so I just dip this in my isopropyl alcohol and then you know this is going to get messy so and then just clean it here. Get in there as good as you can. Uh, now, you don't want to use anything that's really abrasive here because you don't want to stretch the surface or anything like that. You need that o-ring to be able to seal. So this might take you a while because uh, I've already done this so it doesn't really need to happen again so I'm just going to dry this one off. So yeah, really it's that simple. That part's nice and clean. And uh, then we need to do the same thing with this brass tube here where the plunger sits. You want everything to be nice and clean. Now here I just used the toothbrush. I found that easier to get in there nice and good. And of course, because this is uh, pretty long, you can't really reach the bottom with, the, with just a toothbrush. So. What I did was I just took some paper here and then inserted it there and then just gave it a few turns. That was enough. You can see there's some still some oil left over here from when I did it the first time. Again, final thing is the plunger. Again, alcohol, toothbrush. You want to clean it as thoroughly as you can. You don't want there to be any corrosion because if you leave some on there, there's a chance it might corrode further. And it should be a given that we don't really want that. So, yeah, I've already done this. The part is clean. And then I just wipe it off with some kitchen towel. Again, making sure the brass tube is clean as well, dry. All right. So really it's that simple, you just need the parts to be clean. Now before I reassemble I'm going to uh, take an extra step here. I'm going to lubricate these parts slightly. Now for this you want some acid free oil, you don't uh, want anything that uh, can be corrosive to get on these parts. This one is acid free and uh, it should even be harmless to the fish so no issues there. Just, you don't need much of this stuff, just ever so slightly, just a couple drops in there. That's really all you need. And again, on the plunger, just need a drop. And I'm just going to make sure it's pretty well covered in this stuff. Then we're going to reinsert the plunger into the tube. 
Now I'm also going to lubricate this o-ring just uh, to make it a slightly easier for it to find its seating. I don't want to damage it. So yeah, really, when everything is nice and gre greased up, you just need to reassemble. It's that simple. Again, the reverse order, be careful not to damage the o-ring while uh, inserting the brass tube. And uh, hopefully you took note of how things are supposed to go back in as you took it apart. You want to be careful with any screws. Like I said, they are fine threaded, so the potential for cross threading is uh, big, and you don't want that. So just be careful, take your time. So, yeah, as you can see, this is uh, pretty easy. Anyone should be able to do this. You don't need to over tighten anything here, just tighten it down and snug it up. Now in my case, uh, this uh, solenoid needs to go back on a certain way. There's a couple of small pins there and uh, a couple of holes on this, so you can't really put it on the wrong way. pins just need to find the holes and then we just put the nut back on again be careful not to cross thread anything we definitely don't want that now don't over tighten just snug it down there we go all right so uh, that's actually it it's that simple, just a, a simple cleaning of the parts and uh, this regulator will work again. Now I would suggest that you just keep an eye on it, you know, like I said it's been a few weeks since I did this the first time it's, and uh, for me it's nice enough to get back in here just to check that uh, things were still nice and they were, so uh, I'm not really that worried about it future wise. But uh, yeah, let's hook it back up to the tank and uh, see how it does. So I've got the regulator hooked back up to the tank and uh, yeah, you got to excuse the shaky cam, this is uh, handheld. Uh, I can't really fit the tripod in here, so that's just the way it has to be. Now let's try and open and see what happens. Alright, so tank pressure is up, nothing on the working pressure, so let's try and uh, hook back up the Solenoid and see what happens. Okay. So, working pressure is back up. Now the needle valve is closed. So let's try and over that one. It should be fine. So far everything seems to be uh, working just fine. Now uh, the way we have to test if this is uh, working as is, is of course we have to shut off the solenoid. And uh, over time if the working pressure drops then uh, it's fine. If it doesn't that means the solenoid is not shutting off properly and uh, the issue persists. Now of course I've already done this once, so I know this one should work fine, but let's try it anyway. Solenoid is off. Now, you can see working pressure is dropping steadily. Eventually it will be at zero. So yeah, the solenoid shuts off just as, as it should. Now, depending on your diffuser, uh, how much pressure it takes to uh, push the CO2, CO2 uh, through it, uh, the working pressure can drop fast like this one, which means it doesn't take much to push the CO2 through the diffuser, or it can uh, take up to even a few minutes to drop. 
But yeah, this one is uh, working just fine. Success! So we managed to fix another one. Um, it's always nice just fixing something rather than just throwing it out and uh, it's better for the environment and all that. And uh, also it gives a certain amount of satisfaction to knowing that you can get stuff working again. So yeah, uh, always remember that uh, when you've worked on any regulator you'll want to soap it up to check for leaks. Now uh, this one was fixed weeks ago at this point like I said. So I'm pretty confident that it uh, doesn't leak. Uh, now that's it for this time so uh, if you like this video uh, I would much appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and uh, if you feel it's worth your time I would also love it if you would subscribe. And also if you have any suggestions on future content then uh, please leave it in the, th in the comments. So yeah, thank you for watching and uh, I hope you have a nice day.